hi everyone you're welcome back to my channel um happy new year to you i hope you enjoyed the christmas and new year holiday and you're back to work well i enjoyed my own holiday and now it's time for exams so <laughs> Anyways, um, in the midst of all, having to write exams, relocating, settling down and all, I decided to make this video because I feel this is like the peak time for um, scholarship application. Most of the programs will be closing soon. Some people have already started getting um, invites for the final interview. While for some other programs, you're still lucky, they're still open. So in case you have not submitted and your application is still open, well, you might still find this helpful. Yes, so um, I've been getting a lot of questions about SOP and I decided to make a dedicated video for this. Um, usually I should have just um, answer the questions generally but i feel after your academic track record the second most important thing in my own opinion in this scholarship is like your sop and that is why i'm making these dedicated videos also today i'm going to be i'm not going to be reading directly to you my sop so i'm going to be giving you like the structure of my own my personal sop I'll first share some things that you should never do in um, Erasmus Mundo's SOP. So first thing is, first thing you should know is Erasmus Mundo's scholarship is not um, about your financial status. I know there are some scholarships that address financial status. Probably you are from um, a poor country or you need help and then when so when you write things like um you, you're you're struggling financially and all those things um it moves them and they consider it for the scholarship and some of the scholarship is um purely based on merit they don't care if um you have been struggling to pay your school fees since you were in Nigerian. so don't play a pity game in erasmus mundo scholarship i mean prove your points show that you have something to offer so in your sop avoid writing things like um I, my parents have been struggling to pay my school fees or I don't have fun for this. No, no, no. That's not the concern here. Yeah. Yes, there are some scholarships that that works for. Um, I think um, the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship, yes, you can um, do all that there. But in Erasmus, no, it's a no-no. So in Erasmus, you're trying to prove your point because it is purely based on merit. So the second thing that you should not do is don't overextend your SOP. Um, I've seen SOPs of um, three pages, some even up to four pages, like necessary now. <laughs> it's not needed, like it's not necessary really. Um, an SOP of like one page is actually okay. My SOP was um, a page and few more lines. It's not up to one and a half pages. For some programs, they tell you specifically the number of words they want. For some programs, they tell you the number of pages they want. And for some, they don't tell you. So if they don't tell you, don't go ahead and make your SOP three pages. So if you have three pages of SOP, um, try as much as possible. I know you want to pour everything out there. Try as much as possible to compress it and reduce it to like one page or one and a half pages or maximum two pages. Um, they have a lot of applications to review. So if you don't want to bore them with just your own stories. So try to keep it short and concise. Put only information that matter. Okay, um, another mistake you shouldn't make in your SOP is don't repeat everything that is in your CV. There is that temptation to pour out everything in your CV in your SOP. No, they've seen your CV. That, that's why you're submitting your CV and your SOP. So what they want to see in your SOP are things that are not like explicitly expressed in your CV. Don't make, don't repeat the things that you have in your CV. Yes, you can refer to the things you have in your CV, but in another light, like you try to amplify them or you try to like bring out the point. So for example, if you have put it in your CV that you studied, for example, computer science at um, Otweke University, there's no point coming to your CV again and repeating the same line that um, you graduated from the Department of Computer Science, Otweke University. No, you can say something like, um, during your studies at the university or blah, 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 you did these courses. I mean, courses that are related to the scholarship you're applying for. Your SOP should not re-echo your CV. It should be something unique, something, something unique about the experiences you have in your CV that you can't um, possibly write in your cv so you can you have the sop to like amplify those things so i mean if you are able to do that and you don't repeat your cv i think that way you'll be able to 
um, reduce even the length of your SOP. Finally, this is very huge. Like this is very, very huge. You don't plagiarize. Like never, never plagiarize. Your SOP should be your SOP should be unique to you, so don't plagiarize. I mean, one of my professors here told me that if you're an high-ranking student in the class and they rated you this I before now, and then you submitted a work, let's say an assignment or a project, and they found out that you plagiarize, to them, like yourself, your words to them has dropped to like a ground level. That's how much they value that's how much they take plagiarism serious so don't joke with it don't plagiarize like it is a no 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 so try to make your sop unique you can um make references to some materials and combine different materials together put it in your own words try to make it unique so um don't plagiarize it's bad for you so to the climax of the video i'm going to be sharing um, what i have in my sop the structure and um what the content look like i'm not going to be reading it to you because i don't want it to plagiarize i mean i could have just um uploaded it out there oh this is my sop but i know if i do that and then i get like 10 sops to review i will read my sop like eight of them like there's that temptation if you have somebody else's SOP are looking at there's that temptation to want to plagiarize so i'll save you from plagiarizing so i won't read everything out to you i'll just give you like the structure so for the first paragraph of, of the SOP, try to keep it brief as much as possible. Don't elongate words. Don't use over complex English. We know you know English, but don't um, over complicate things. Okay. So what I have in my first paragraph was like, um, there, there's a problem, right? That I identified from the United Nations page. Like there's a statistics, right? So I went to their page. I got the statistics about that problem. And then I mentioned it, I put it in my own words, and I mentioned it. So I stated that as a motivation for me to want to study the program um, software engineering for Greendale. I think it's important for me to say this, that if you are making statistics, the people that are, that are going to be evaluating your SOP at that level, they are well read, they are smart, they are intelligent. And then you don't want to give wrong statistics. If you are not sure, please go to um, reliable websites where you can get accurate statistics. Don't don't um, give wrong statistics or just a statistic that you just think that it should be correct in your head. No, don't do that. So try to get um, accurate statistics. And again, for that first paragraph, I would say this. Um, don't make it too long I, i've seen so many sops where their first paragraph is like um, 10 lines and still they've not stated the motivation for um for applying to the program they have just um, stated problems in like 10 or 20 lines no that is too long so don't let any paragraph go by without you bringing yourself into it or relating your experience or your motivation to that paragraph and don't make it too long in fact the first paragraph should be really really short like three lines is okay or max four lines identify a problem and um say how that problem has motivated you to want to apply for the program my next paragraph was about my academic background and my um job experience my work experience so um, in this paragraph like i said earlier don't repeat what you have in your cv try to make like major highlights like you know in your cv you don't have space for long stories like your achievements you don't you don't have the space to show off your sop is the opportunity the platform for you to show off to show off what you've achieved in your job experience in your academics so and um, what i have there i didn't state it that um, i graduated from the department of computer science federal university blah 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 no i skipped all that part and i went straight to the point that okay i offered this course this course this course courses are related to software engineering for Greendale. so I, I stated the courses that i did in my undergraduates and like stating that i came out with A's in those courses, like with good grades in those courses. You know that in your CV, you don't have the opportunity to say, oh, I did um, software engineering in my undergraduate and I had A in it. But in your SOP, you have the opportunity to say that. So they can be sure that I have enough background knowledge to be able to excel in the program I'm applying for. Okay, I also mentioned my class of graduation, is it first class, two, one, or whatever you graduated with? 
is it top one you can also use something like top one percent top ten percent yeah you can read about what that is so you know how to classify yourself if you are part of the top one percent or the top ten percent and then i also mentioned briefly about my undergraduate research my undergraduate projects although my undergraduate project is not so related to the program i'm, I'm applying for but i i try to structure it in such a way that it's it links in a way and then i also mentioned that um, working with my supervisor, a professor, has um, taught me how to um, do proper research and all that. So it's a plus, okay? And then I moved on to share my internship experience, um, the projects I worked on, and what I do at my workplace. Like I shared my work experience, my, my major projects, projects that I am proud of, projects that, um, you know, they make my head swell that I've worked on at my workplace. So I shared this project and in sharing those projects, I didn't just share my work experience. I also shared how my work experience, how it can be related. You know, actually before applying for um, this scholarship, I never ever, ever, ever in my life thought about how my work experience can be related to software engineering for Green Deal. Yeah, I, I was working as a software engineer, but Green Deal, but like, <laughs> It was not related, but when it was time, you know, when I submitted my SOP for review, my my reviewer was like, no, you have to like link this to Green Deal because they are so particular about sustainability. So you have to like bring in sustainability to your work experience. So like that, that was the part we had to read about um, sustainability and ICT. And um, I tried to link the project I've done in software engineering to how um, a studies in sustainability can be used to improve this project and you know can be used to make things better so i'm just going to read a line i'm not going to like tell you what i have in that paragraph these experiences gave me a glimpse of how cloud computing can greatly influence the environment and it further motivated me to pursue a career in green computing Full stop Okay, and then I went on to um, share my um, volunteering experiences from university up to the current moment. Um, uh, some of the things that I've led, some of the volunteering experiences I've had, um, you know, Google Developers Group in, in school back then, Women Tech Maker and all that. I put all my volunteering experience together to show that I've been also I've also been building on my social communication and leadership skills, not just academics. Okay, they want a, a complete package, not just people that are good with academics. They want to be sure that you are also good in other aspects of life. So the paragraph for um, work experience. Um, work experience, volunteering experience and academic experience was like the longest for me. Um, and what I did when I saw that paragraph was too long, I split it into two. So I had my um, academics in one paragraph and my job experience and my volunteering experience in another paragraph. So it depends on you. I mean, if you feel the paragraph is too long to so combine both, you can split it into two. That was what I did, okay? So my next paragraph was, um, I stated my goals, my long-term goals, my short-term short goals. So they want to know, um, do you just want to study this program for a race? Like, what is your goal exactly? Do you want to go for a PhD in this field? Or do you want to work on something in this field? What do you aim to achieve with this when you study this? So you state your long-term goals and your short-term goals and how you feel the program can be of up to you. And then you move on to state why you chose that program or why you chose that course or why you're applying for this scholarship. So for me, it was not just for the academics. I want to see the world. Erasmus, one of those scholarships gives you the opportunity to see the world. I mean, you can travel to so many European countries. You can meet so many people. It's a platform that gives you opportunity that gives you opportunity to meet people so like that was like a big point for me so i said it there the reason why i'm applying for this yes i i want to solve problems okay and i said the kind of problem i want to solve and also um i want to meet people i want to learn new culture i'm giving some tips like i'm indirectly reading my sop to you and i also mentioned how i feel this program is befitting you know to suits that go and the last paragraph, like I concluded by reaffirming that I, I believe I am fit. I am fit, like I'm qualified. So don't downplay yourself. Don't, I, I said it earlier, don't play pity game. 
and don't downplay yourself like be confident show that i'm fit i'm fit to you know i'm fit to do this I, I can do this so like let them know you can do it and then yeah reaffirm reaffirm the fact that you can do this and just one or two lines i i believe with with my academic background with my work experience my volunteering experience my leadership experience and all that i'm confident i'm, I'm going i'm going to excel in these studies so um yes so that's my sop in the wrap um i believe um, even without reading it you have an idea of what my sop looks like and everything is like a page and a page and five lines yes or everything i've just said now i compressed it into one page and five lines so your sop does not have to be like two pages you don't have to say everything say the most important thing and um, as much as possible try to check for errors um, if you if you are able to do this i mean even if you are sending your sop to someone to review you are going to um, reduce the work that they have to do because you've covered almost everything so mostly they are just checking you've done your own assignments very well so mostly they are just checking for you know a few addition and subtraction and um, probably grammatical errors and all that okay i've come to the end of the video for today um if you have more questions please ask in the comment section i'd love to hear from you and uh, i wish you success in your application and then um, if you're yet to subscribe to my channel please subscribe because i have some more interesting and amazing content for you even outside scholarship application so if you're yet to subscribe don't forget to subscribe and um till we see again stay cool stay safe and goodbye